both speakers are talking about the same phenomenon, uh, yet they were very, very different uh, presentations, right? And uh, there's, in some ways, that's not too surprising because uh, urbanization in China is so complex, so rich that uh, uh, there's room for 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 seeing different things, which are in fact there. The, so one question is, how do we reconcile these these different presentations that we have? How do how how might we describe the two presentations we just heard? I think. Um, in a sense, uh, Mr. Wetzel's presentation, which, uh, which we just heard, I think, in a sense, gives um, a sense of the benefits associated broadly with urbanization that I think are, in fact, very well substantiated on a, on a global basis. And China is, in fact, uh, a rather shining example of how uh, a managed urbanization process can deliver many benefits, economic benefits and others, um, and emphasizing the role of managing that process well. And um, part of it has to do, of course, with the fact that labor resources were so profoundly misallocated in some ways uh, at the beginning of the process, say four decades ago, that there's a lot of gain to be, uh, to be realized through, uh, through, through that reallocation. The, this, the second speaker, Professor Tao, um, l focusing uh, more on some of the uh, looming uh, potential dangers associated with the model, uh, the growth model broadly that incorporates urbanization as a, as a key part of that, and in particular the, uh, the, the kind of debt overhang, the underlying um, uh, fragility uh, and overextended nature of the fiscal underpinnings uh, of all of that. And so they're, they're, in a sense, one is a more optimistic message, one is a more pessimistic message, and I think both messages need to be heard and be, need to be recognized for that. Uh, this is um, my own, a diagram I put together a few years ago uh, that tries to look at some of the same features that uh, both, both speakers were uh, addressing. I won't sort of try to uh, provide any, any uh, real detailed explanation of it. Uh, hopefully you've been looking at it as I've been uh, talking. But you can see that there is this interrelationship of several factors. And the one thing I would point out is there's this sort of strong link between technology, globalization, and markets <laughs> fueling urbanization kind of on that bottom but also this strong link between the sort of political devolution process and markets and urbanization. And in a sense, uh, to some extent, the speakers have been giving us sort of focusing on different elements of this ball of yarn. Um, in terms of the urbanization outcomes, one of the things that, see, this is a um, diagram originally done by um, Newman and Kenworthy, who I think were Australian scholars and planners who were, um, it's a quite striking diagram when you just look at the relationship between density and uh, energy use. And we see that there are some fairly distinctive patterns in different parts of the world that, um, that the variations we see between cities, for example, in North America, um, or the variation we look at, uh, we see between cities in Asia, for example, those variations are very, very small compared to the variations we see between continents. And so, so there are a lot of these, uh, clearly there are a lot of localized factors and other institutional and demographic and historical considerations that, uh, that steer these. But what we have seen in uh, China over the last uh, the last decades is an emerging sort of new 
type of city, unfortunately, and I say this as uh, a scholar of urban planning here in the United States, unfortunately, they, uh, it seems that in China they have been learning much from us, and some of, in some ways, uh, taking on some of our worst practices and, um, and sort of amplifying that uh, in a way that only China can, given its size and its uh, determination. And in terms of the question of sustainability, which has been addressed, uh, this, this is from the, uh, the, uh, the IPPC, or the Global Carbon Project, which is um, essentially looking at these trends in greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see that China is, is this is a very frightening graph. And given that so much of of the kind of emissions levels are rooted in our use of land and urban spaces. Uh, and given that this is being, that this urbanization process is now very, very much underway and complete, it's, it's a, becoming a little bit late to turn it back. Uh, so this is posing some profound challenges. But I think perhaps uh, one of the challenges that's addressed, um, Mr. Wetzel was mentioning as well in his comments, uh, in addition to the physical change and the geographical change and the economic change, there is a very large change uh, just sort of in terms of uh, mentality or culture or outlook as we, uh, as we begin to urbanize. That it's not just urbanization, but it's a question of becoming more urbane, more sophisticated. And we see this uh, increasingly Right? When, we, when we travel to China, more and more people we encounter who are aware of the world, who, who are aware of ideas in the world, who are enormously fascinating to, to speak with. And this, this pro process of urbanization poses different challenges of itself in terms of the political context with which uh, this entire transformation is managed. That uh, the, nation, the nature of the expectations uh, is increasing, uh, increase, uh, and the challenge of the leadership then, I think, is to stay ahead of the curve, uh, and whether they can adapt the methods of political governance in an, ur an increasingly urbane environment that are going to be relevant and are going to be appropriate and going to be effective in meeting some of the challenges that we're uh, outlined by both of our uh, speakers. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, respond to those.